Hello everyone and welcome to part two of the Watson Virtual Agent series. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is with just a few lines of JavaScript code to actually integrate the Watson Virtual Agent into your website. So here we see I have the fictitious telco company, my wireless that I created, and we see the uh, chat with an agent option which has the same virtual agent that we saw in the part one of this series where I showed you how to do all the configurations so you can change the messages and turn turn on the intents or turn off the intents as, as needed for yourself. But you didn't have a actual user interface like this um, at that time, right? So now we have a user interface. We finished all the configuration. We want to add it to the user interface. I'll show you how easy that is with a few lines of code. So if you go into your favorite uh, editor, uh, this is a Node.js application. I'm using Eclipse. And if I bring up the index.html file, I can see how really it is just a few lines of code that I need here to actually call the Watson Virtual Agent and insert that into my um, insert that into my website. And the rest of this code here is where I'm subscribing the different kinds of actions and things this is for integration. Here it is for uh, integration to a database where I'm actually updating an address, and I'll I'll show you that in the next part of the video series. For right now. I will concentrate just on kind of getting the virtual agent to display on your website. So I'm basically just calling the init method with this configuration parameter. And the configuration parameter, um, the key here is, is going to be the bot ID. So anytime you're going to use a service, especially like Watson Virtual Agent, you're going to need um, an ID and a password. And here you're also going to need the ID of the bot that you're going to have. So all these, those three things are unique uh, to you and your bot and you'll get those from the Watson uh, Virtual Agent site. It'll, it'll link you to the um, IBM API Explorer where you'll see that defined there. Uh, here, we'll, we'll just, we're just gonna put the bot ID. Now, if you look at some of the um, documentation, it takes you out to public GitHub, and there's a lot of examples here on public GitHub that people just go ahead and write it within the index uh, HTML file, they'll just put you know, if you're using this kind of an example, they'll just put their uh, ID and password as well right here in this configuration parameter. And you really don't want to do that. Not a good idea ever to hard code um, IDs and passwords of your services, uh, especially ones that you're going to maybe put out in a public repository like Git later on or you're going to have running on Bluemix. You don't want to do that in there. You want to use configuration parameters instead. So. I'll show you right now how, how you do that here uh, with the uh, Watson Virtual Agent. So here we're just going to put the bot ID out there and that's it, not the ID and the password for it. I'm going to define the URL as WVA. If I go into my uh, application code that's going to be running in the server, you know, I take a look at it and here I'm going to set up my Watson virtual agent environment variables and I'm actually going to grab the ID and the secret or the ID and the password from environment variables that I define. So I'm going to show you where you define those um, in Bluemix in a second. Um, but right now, you know, if I was to do this locally, I would I would use this require.env. I'd read the .env file, I'd pull it from there. Um, or if I'm running on Bluemix, I'm going to pull it from there. So that's basically what I want to do. I want I want to go ahead and add these into my into my request headers into this options variable. And here we're just kind of intercepting that request. So the WVA gets intercepted here in that path. We put the actual URL to the Watson Virtual Agent Service. I add in the options, and then from the request headers, you know, I already have my ID, my password in there. And then I just do a post, you know, to that. And then that's really all there is, you know, kind of for the code that's required to, to um, uh, integrate Watson Virtual Agent into your own website. And again, like I said, you use a .env file and do it locally if you want to do that locally. And then you push it up to Bluemix. You're going to need to define these environment variables from within Bluemix. So you do that basically. Um, through the, your app. So here's my Telco customer service app. I click on that within my dashboard. And then that'll take me to 
kind of the uh, console for the app where I can go to the runtime and then this is where I would define you know my environment variables I click on that it's pretty easy it's just a you know create a new environment variable um, right through the user interface and you store your passwords um, your client ID and your client secret in there so good really good practice to do overall you know for any of your service calls now one of the next things I want to show is so you so you've done your development um, now you're probably going to want to actually automate, you know, the the deployment. Maybe you want to build some, you know, testing that's automated in there as well. So you want to do something called uh, a tool chain. So we'll create a tool chain within the DevOps. And the best way to do this that I've seen is to create a, you know, go to the catalog and look under DevOps, create an instance for the continuous delivery service. And put that you know into your own environment here, so you have your own instance of this, and then you're going to get an option of getting started with continuous delivery. You can start with a pipeline if you have that already, or you can start with a tool chain template. If I look at that, it gives me all different kinds of options that you can explore. Maybe if you're doing something with Docker, um, I picked the simple uh, Cloud Foundry tool chain version two, and what that looks like is something like this so it'll create my own um, I associate it with a project and then I basically already have some things predefined for me it gives me issues uh, like an issue tracker I have uh, can store my code in git as well as um, offers me a delivery pipeline here and then I can add all different kinds of other tools to this as well like alerts um, I could have you know do testing in sauce labs I have um, integration with Jenkins or Sonar Cube, Slack if I want to actually post things to a Slack channel as I build and deploy. Or, you know, I can create, you know, integration to another tool. Um, here's GitHub as well as, so I have the public GitHub as well as a private IBM GitLab, you know, version. So I could add all those things in here. This is uh, basically what it gives you by default, though, when you use that template. And it's very easy to configure. You go ahead, um, you're going to want to configure your delivery pipeline. And the build stage, I click on the little gear icon. I go ahead and configure that. Fairly straightforward again. Uh, if I go ahead and go to my input, you know, I select my repository. I have everything in the private um, IBM GitLab here. Not a lot to that to configure it. And then I go ahead in the deploy stage, a little bit different that I need to configure. Um, I go ahead and remember we when we define the environment variables we need to define that here as well so I have to not only define it in my runtime I'm going to need to define it here in my client ID and client secret and then I have a cloud URL because I'm uh, using cloud in, in this as well not a whole lot to do kind of on this side it fills in but on the job side um, the big part here is the actual script now it does a blue green deploy that's something that's typically used for production deployments so you have very little downtime it spins up a whole nother container and it does a quick you know swap from turning one container off to turning the other one on um, I don't want to go through all that just for kind of a demo so I wrote I commented that out and wrote my own kind of just you know CF push CF restart basically all you need to do when you do a deploy but since I have environment variables, I need to set the environment variables as well. And this is where I do that here. Um, I set those. Um, these are the environment variables that I defined on this previous uh, page here. And I also need to do it here. And then I just pipe or redirect everything to slash dev slash null because I don't want my ID and passwords to show up in my log files. So that's it. Once I do that, pretty straightforward. Um, now every time that I go in Eclipse and I do a commit, it commits it to the Git repository, and then that kicks off an automatic build and deploy it to Bluemix. So that's all you need to do to get started with um, adding the virtual agent to your uh, own website. Thanks very much.